Assalamu alaikum, brother Booker. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Nice to you. I was almost asking you in Turkish, Nasilsinus. Ben iyi. What does that mean? That's mean, how are you? I'm good. That's great. Anyways, um, so it's been now uh, how many years since you uh, become Muslim? Uh, it was December 2009. So that's almost uh, four and a half years. MashaAllah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Can you tell, I guess, uh, share with us your journey before what led you to Islam? I mean, there was a little journey because I was always looking for something that was missing in the life, right? And uh, and I have to admit, I went all the way to the other direction. Um, I, I'm a physicist, right? And as a physicist, you train your brain and your thought that you don't need God in life you don't need this right and because everything is working towards or you know, like a law right and you find out and humans are capable to find out all the laws and so that pushed more and more like you know in europe that happens of course since 200 years that god was basically pushed out because of science and because of technology outside of the life however you know for me something was missing and I, you know, like many other Muslims who converted, I also studied Buddhism and other things. I looked into that and I got attracted to Buddhism because there was this um, thought about, you know, meditation. I kind of like that. So to, to you know, take yourself out of, of the regular world, right? And um, so I listened to a lot of Buddhist practices and, uh, you know, things were like suffering, right? And all the things that we say now is in the dunya, right? They are being taken, taken away, right? Sorry. So, okay, so, uh, so what happened, I guess, after... So, I mean, what I'm saying is I started to meditate and started to, um, you know, think about, you know, what are these essential things. And like Buddhists, right, they try to detach them from what we call the dunya. Right? That is the, the, what the Buddhist is doing. The dunya mean what's dunya? Mean? Dunya, the world, right? The oh. world and you know the enoughs and everything. You know that's around that. Um, so you're trying to detach yourself from that, and with that you should have a more pleasant life, because you are taking away all the things that cause trouble or cause suffering, and that is the things that you know that that is life. You know your enoughs. And your needs and your desires they call they cause pain and that is the buddhist belief now you know making a long story short later um i got a job or got not a job but an assignment in the united emirates that was the first time i was ever in a muslim country and that was a new thing to me so i was open to that but i tell you quite frankly if you would have asked me to become a muslim that time i would say you're crazy right i would never ever do that you know because I was, of course, like like everybody else, um, I heard the biased news from, from, from the news, right, and what Muslims are, and I had not the right perception from what Muslims are. And that's not quite right. I was actually in Turkey before, and I, I heard the Azan in the morning, and I thought it was just crazy. Right? So that was, they were backwards. That was my honest belief. Now, I was in the Emirates, and um, the first... Thing that came to where I got a little bit more you know closer to what what Islam was I had this driver who was driving me every morning to the um, to the office and back so the, the office there sent a driver and they picked me up from the hotel and drove me back I was there for the first week and I thought since I'm in Abu Dhabi right, I want to see Dubai and we'll see how that looks like and I asked the guy if he would be free on the weekend and would drive me around in Dubai so yes he came we drove around and um, now he was Muslim and he asked me if he could make some stops on the road he said he had to do some prayers I was not aware of that concept when the prayers were and whatnot I said of course you have to do what you have to do so he kept driving me around so he dropped me off back at the hotel and then he said to me after I paid him I paid him a little tip more than I should have or I was supposed to and um, he said I pray for you and the way he said that it was not just I pray for you and he said that that was deep from his heart that really touched me so that was the first thing and later on I also met my wife that I have now right and she started to introduce me more so the second incident is I I was having a taxi driver another taxi driver drove me to the big mosque in Abu Dhabi and he introduced me to voodoo how to make voodoo and everything 
And I went to the prayer. That was the first time in the big mosque in, uh, in I think it was a Friday prayer. I can't even remember. It was the first because it was packed there. And uh, we did the Friday prayer. I didn't know what I'm, I was just imitating pretty much. So that was the first, first steps towards Islam. And then the other thing I observed there that was at 12 o'clock when the Adam was praying, everybody would go to the mosque. And I liked that concept a lot because that was very close what I learned from the Buddhists. Right? They really practiced it. Everybody did. They dropped everything and went arm in arm together down the elevator into the mosque. I said, wow, look at that. Right? So that was, that's amazing. Right? They really stop and stop all the nonsense that you do in life. I mean, I shouldn't say nonsense, but you know, all your busy work and you go and go pray and distance yourself from the dunya. Right? Yeah. And then come back and they come arm in arm, you know, like friends. That was impressive to me. Right? So these are these are things. And then of course I, I, I shouldn't neglect the, neglect the part that I met my wife and she kept teaching me and teach taught me how to pray and taught me everything about Islam and so I picked up, you know, eventually I converted, right? So I took the Shahada in Abu Dhabi and they gave me a ton of books, right? A ton of books, and believe it or not, in German, right? In Abu Dhabi, you get the books they give you, a ton of books in English and, and in German. German. Yes, and I'm, I'm just reading one of them actually from Gear, right? the guy who's um, in conflict with Erdogan. And, uh, he's actually here in the US, right? This, the, the, um, oh, that, that's with huh? Yeah, that's with Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, he's here in the US, and he, I, they gave me actually three or four books from him uh, in translated mm -hmm. into German. So I started reading this and got more and more into this and understood more and more about the concept of Islam. And what I really liked about it was when I you know, looked at the Buddhist practice that I, that I learned, I realized that the Muslims actually translated, they lived it, they did it. Right? If you really practice Islam, you do what the Muslims are, what the Buddhists are talking about. You distance yourself from the dunya. If you really do it right, you know, you take it all away, right? And you do it. And if you practice and you go pray and think about this and you, you give your, you know, Pesach card and all these kind of things, these are all the concepts that are being taught by Buddhism too, believe it or not. Right? So, and that, that's what I, that's, that's what, what draw, drew me more into it, because if you go down that route, and I've, I've talked to other people too, I've, I know many people went through the Buddhist route into Islam, um, that seems to be a natural path, right? because you have to, you know, it's closer, Buddhism is closer to, to the Western thinking, so mm -hmm. that's easier to grasp. And from there, when you understood the Buddhist thinking, you can actually then also understand Islam. Yes. There is, there is some, there is seem to be some way for yeah. people to get from mm -hmm. here to there. The I'm not sure if, if, if there is. Not sure it makes that's sense. The, the, the success when the mu'minin are really uh, in in their prayer, they have full humility. It's he's yeah. talking about the first Hashim. verses from uh, Surah 23, yeah. chapter 23. Indeed, the believers are successful. Those who are in their salah, they have khushua, you know, full, yeah. full, full, full submissiveness. Full submissiveness, at least full concentration. And there are many hadith about that, right? Yes. So when people were in full concentration, what happened yeah. to them? And they were all in full concentration. But that is the same like meditation. A yes. full, if, if you do, if you are to that state in Buddhism, that you do this concentrated meditation, it's very, very similar. A very, very similar concept. Yeah. Okay. So, so, yeah. You, go ahead. So, I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. Of course, and then there are all the other virtues. Because, you know, what's kind of missing in Buddhism, even though they, they teach you these practices, I don't know how I should say that, but the, the guidance is missing, right? Here, you have one guidance, you have one destination, right? Yeah. That is Allah, right? So yeah. that gives you the meaning in life. And, yeah. and if you think, let's, let, let me phrase it more profanely, um, if you think whatever you do, you do it for Allah, then you do it. I'm trying looking for words now, right? Yeah. So when you look at Buddhism, you should do everything and take away your interests, right? Yeah. But here you have a little purpose in Sufficient. life. But you have a purpose in life. You are here for a reason, and whatever you do, you should do for Allah. Yes. Right? And take all your own interests and all your nerves away. I know that's hard, right? It's no who can really do that. But if you do it this way, 
then it gives you a certain and I should, I'm looking for the right happiness is not the right way peace or of, it gives you peace of mind yeah like peace, peace of mind yourself. because you you feel like now you're doing the right thing sure I mean that's the right thing to do it's not you're not doing it for yourself you're doing it for a higher reason yeah, yeah? whatever yeah. you do and if you think about all your actions in that manner then that gives you you know great guidance mm -hmm. right? and if you keep practicing this right, then then I mean that that is where where you can get better right? overall I mean you do that in Buddhism but I don't think in Buddhism I've never seen this that you get this guidance yes they talk about suffering and how to avoid suffering in life but this guidance is missing this this part is this from my perspective is missing and I'm not trying to compare the religions say, oh, this religion is better than that one we shouldn't be doing this mm -hmm. I know that but I'm just trying to say that to describe how I came from here to there Mm -hmm. that makes any sense yes well Jazakallah Khan Brother Bolford and hopefully we will have a uh, follow up in part 2 in the future inshallah and thank you thus far for sharing your journey and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to make it easy for you and your family and for everyone that's searching for the truth inshallah Jazakallah Khan Assalamu alaikum